As one half of the country music duo, The Judds, Naomi Judd sold 20 million records and won six Grammy Awards. She's also a registered nurse who was diagnosed with hepatitis C in 1991. A health care activist, Ms. Judd, who was in town recently for Chicago Ideas Week. She stopped by the studio to talk about music and medicine. I also asked her about her relationship with the late Maya Angelou. You know, the first time I went to see her, um, she had invited me. And I remember I made a pineapple upside down cake. I love to cook, but it's in her book, I Know Where the Cage Bird Sings, that um, that was her Christmas present every year, with some pineapple. And here I am sitting in her kitchen, and um, my mom, um, God love her, just uh, can't give me what she never had. She never had love. You know, you don't go to the hardware store for milk. Mm. So my whole life, I've been trying to win mom's approval and um, get her attention. And all of a sudden, my Angelo um, asked me how my life was going and what I was learning and all the stuff that. So there's somebody out there. There's somebody out there to be a mentor and to say, it's OK, I get it. Let's talk about how you have dealt with uh, hepatitis C because you were diagnosed with hepatitis C <laughs> yep. in 1991 and uh, you went through what, for want of a better term, is a miraculous recovery. Mm -hmm. How did you do it? I was told in 1990 because I used to work in ICU in the hospital. Because you're a nurse. You're yep. an RN yep. by training. I see you. <laughs> But, uh, and I was actually going to go on and get my MD <clears throat> when Winona started singing on me, and I knew I had to um, take her to Nashville because that was her dream. The kid had it stamped on her forehead. We knew that was her destiny. But um, I remember vaguely, because I was critically ill, sitting in a wheelchair, and I've got three doctors, star twat lab coats, telling me, based on the pathology slide of your liver biopsy, you have three years to live. And there was something in my spirit and my core that I just said, how dare you? You just put a medical hex, a medical curse on me because our belief becomes our biology. You know, the body moves along the path of its expectation. And I was just infuriated. And I said, you're guilty of mental malpractice. Actually, what I said was, you need to resign now <laughs> and become a lighthouse keeper on a remote coast in Maine. So you took, Matt, you, <clears throat> you took your health into your, own, into your own hands. What did you do to heal yourself? In 1990, they had just come out with the first rough draft of interferon, I-N-T-E-R-F-E-R, F-E-R-O-N. Interferon is a naturally occurring protein in the human body that fights, uh, but... This was a synthetic version. It was so horrific with its side effects that nobody could handle it. Um, I somehow uh, stayed on it for six months. And then um, my ALT, AST, I'm talking liver stuff now, but it spiked. And I started uh, studying the spirit mind body connection, the fact that this is a continuum, holistic medicine. And I met with uh, Dr. Andrew Weil. Dr. Dean Ornish. I started hanging out with all these brilliant, that's why I'm into neuroscience. I take um, neuroscience now at Vanderbilt. And I've been fascinated by neuroscience for 20 years because the mind is everything. And uh, you, you, you talk about something called, um, you say you learn how to practice imagery. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you mean by that? Um, okay, today I have to give a speech in front of, let's see, George Lucas is on right after me. Just all these geniuses and brainiacs, and it's very intimidating. You only get a cert certain amount of time and very serious parameters. So what I do is imagine, first of all, my message, um, exactly what I feel like I can contribute then I get real clean about that. You know, you get the ego out of the way. You make sure that your facts are all right. I always say, um, you're entitled to your opinion. You're not entitled to y your opinion of the facts, whatever you're talking about. So I want to be real clear that my message um, is on point with what the agenda for the day is. But did you use your imagery in, uh, was that part of your recovery from uh, hepatitis yeah. C? 
I imagine, for instance, that there was a, a clear rushing waterfall that was going through my whole bodily system, and it was wiping out the hepatitis C virus. Hepatitis C virus is um, able to mutate, and it's going to be really tricky to come up with a vaccine. But right now, we have a, a pill. Unfortunately, it's a thousand dollars. Yes, it's called Sovaldi. I was going to ask you about it because the treatment regimen for that runs roughly eighty-six thousand dollars. Yes, Your does. reaction to that? I think it's immoral. Immoral. <laughs> yes, I do. My husband keeps saying that you're going to find me dead in a ditch. You know the Karen Silkwood thing because mm. the drug companies. Um, I know that the drug companies have to make money. They have to do R and D research and development, but it's. Um, one of the most immoral things that goes on in America right now, that we have all these people that could be um, healed, cured, if uh, we just put people first. In the 1960s, as I alluded, you were a single mom, you are living paycheck, paycheck to paycheck, no credit card. What is your advice to somebody in a similar situation today? You know, because there are so many people who have to work two or three jobs mm -hmm. to keep it together. Uh, I love single working moms. I speak at vocational schools. Uh, they might want to go to vocational school or one of our tech schools. And I know from um, being there that these women are afraid of computers and they're afraid of math, but you can do it. You can get uh, a six month degree, you can get a two year degree. There are places that they can go. If, uh, and I also work with Goodwill. If you're just getting out of rehab or out of jail or you know, you're off the streets and you're at that level, um, you don't even know how to answer the phone. You don't know what to wear or anything. So Goodwill is a good place to start there. What I did was finally realize that um, I wanted to be an RN so badly that uh, I put myself through college and got my RN degree. But it was hard. Like Ashley and I slept on a Delouse mattress on the floor. We slept in a, our, our little apartment was about the size of the space right here, and um, a lot of bologna and crackers. But it all paid off. My goodness. Let's get back to music, because there have been so many successful family bands, from the Bee Gees to the Carter family to the Staple Singers. Uh, do you think there's something about having the common DNA which sort of manifests itself in the sound? Absolutely. It's not just the timbre of the voice, uh, the fact that the you know, the anatomy and physiology of the vocal cords and all that. It's the fact that when you live with someone and Winona and I can sing a song that we've never heard before, uh, I can, what I do is I watch your eyebrows. Really? Yep. And we know each other's body language. 85% of our communication is nonverbal anyway. So we always will stand shoulder to shoulder and we just, and I have a slightly different, my voice is a little bit smokier than her. I see she's the fire and I'm the smoke. So my, I'm there to enhance, bolster, and support her best effort. But then when the two of us sing together and hold our note, there's this, I, I go ahead and call it mystical because I believe it's all in the spirit realm anyway. It's a third the, entity. Naomi Judd, it is a pleasure speaking with you. Delighted to have you here. Well, thank you. Good to see you, Phil. And big, big supporter of PBS. I got to say that. Good for you. We appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> yes. And Chicago Tonight continues in a moment, so please stay with us.